Hello and welcome to Jap Show here at a rather blustery but thankfully dry Santa Pod for round three of the Competition Clutch Front Wheel Drive Drag Series. With Run What You Brung action, show and shine and so much more, the Competition Clutch Front Wheel Drive Drag Series is a perfect addition to the Jap Show with all those fast Civics running in the class. And then there's the Mitsubishi FTO of Richard Batty, who became the European record holder just a few weeks ago with a stunning 8.85 run at Shakespeare County Raceway. Having the European record, that's got to put a certain amount of pressure upon you. Um, yeah, probably. I mean, we were, we were surprised that we, we got an 8.8 last time out. Um, it's, we've done similar times um, up to the 8th yesterday testing, so we're, we're there or thereabouts again. But yeah, there's a bit of pressure, but uh, we've got some fast guys on those heels. We'll see how we go. We've got nine cars entered this weekend and we're looking forward to seeing Kelvin Skerritt's first outing of the season in the Civic. Also out for the first time this year is Glenn Robson, again in the Civic and a change of drivers for Team Sam and Jay in the Tigra. Well, we're getting ready for the first qualifying run. I'm here with Sam Bolton. Now, Sam, your first time in a car this year, a few problems. Yeah, we raced at the Outlaw shootout, um, broke two gearboxes, one on the first day, one on the second. Don't really know why. Um, brought it out testing yesterday, done the same thing, so we just, we don't know today. We're just good. It's going to be a wait and see sort of thing. The last few times we've seen you going, it's been quite impressive. The car's been performing quite well, so it seems strange to be throwing up these problems. Yeah, it's been reliable, but uh, we've just been on that edge of that nine second run, and now it's just going to fight us all the way, I think. So, what's your action plan then for the first qualifying? You're just going to see what happens, maybe take it easy, or? No, we'll go, we'll go balls out and we'll see what happens. If it breaks, it breaks. We'll just have to run second gear launch. And what's your, what's your thoughts, what are your hopes? Obviously, you're going to hope for a sub nine, but. Uh, to, to get off the start line today would be a good start. Uh, and then we'll see what happens after that. With quite a lot of brand new competitors out this season, Glenn, you're one of the new ones. Yeah, new to the front wheel drive series, yes, so new car, we'll see how it goes. And you've gone for a Civic, which is pretty popular, isn't it? Well, yeah, we always run a Renault 5 and we hope world record for the fastest Renault 5, but we're outclassed against the Civics and the bigger engine cars, so we've decided to build the Civic, see how we get on. So it's the first of three scheduled rounds of qualifying. And first out, it's Dan Frost in the left lane and Sam Bolton in the right. Well, Sam, not bothering about cutting a good light. This is, of course, qualifying, so reaction times don't matter. But he did want to get a good launch. Now, the gearbox looks like it's held up OK. Crossing the line, a healthy 10.17 for Sam against the 10.99 for Dan. Next up, then, the European record holder in the right-hand lane, Mr. Richard Batty in the Mitsubishi, up against James Lord in the Volkswagen. Looks like Richard's taking it easy. Not the quickest of runs that I've seen him do. And obviously slowing down at the very end. Very low terminal speed for him at just 135 miles per hour. Now he's going to want to improve upon that for next time. Well, a solo run for Andy Nichols. Some nice exhaust flames on the line. Bogging down off the start line there. Moving about a fair bit as well, half track, sounds like the wheel's spinning, really, really struggling for traction and crossing the line, 11.07, he's going to want to improve upon that next time. Well, next up an Amy Bradley in the left lane and Glenn Robson in the right lane. And Glenn pulling across to the left, heading towards the tree there but does seem to correct it fairly easily. Oh, and Amy seems to have problems. He slows down half-track, limping across the line. Nobody wants to see that. What a shame. That, that didn't go according to plan at all, did it? Uh, no, the car stepped a long way sideways uh, off the line. We managed to keep hold of it. I managed to keep my foot in. Didn't do too bad, though. Considering that, uh, you know, we still did a fairish pass for a front-wheel drive car. When you've run on drag slicks quite a few times, and because we're on such little pressure in the front, uh, you've just you've got to expect the unexpected every time you set off, basically. So, yeah, just keep hold of it. So time for round two of qualifying and hopefully Kelvin Skerritt will make it out this time round. And don't forget, not only does qualifying give drivers a chance to set the cars up for the track conditions, but it also determines who races who in the first round of eliminations. So it's all to play for.
and just before the session starts is a demo run from Team JOS from France. Now they're hoping to get the car ready in time to enter the next round at Santa Pod's ultimate streetcar event in August and looking mighty impressive too. Right then folks, here we go, Richard Batty in the right lane and Dan Frost there in the left lane. Richard Batty, the current European record holder, that car is performing beautifully at the moment and Richard trying to get a great start, has done as well. That car moving through the gears beautifully, the boost about to come in much, much better from Richard Batty, getting up to the line, not stopping this time, 9.14 seconds. Look at that speed, 172 miles an hour and that 11 seconder from Dan, that was incredible from Richard. Next end, Sam Bolton in the right lane and Amy Bradley in the left. Now, Amy is really looking to get more and more out of that car as well and keep the consistency too. And she's done a beautiful start there. Nice gear changes and up to the line. 10.79 there for Amy, but Sam slower than the last run. 10.77, but at least no gearbox problems for him. In the right hand lane, we've got Glenn Robson. On the left-hand lane, we have got Kelvin Skerritt's first outing of the day, but problems for Glenn on the start. Pushed back then, so Kelvin all in his lonesome. And that car is looking very, very quick too. Kelvin doing great stuff behind the wheel, comes up to the line. 9.12 seconds at 166, puts him into number one position. That was a flyer. Amazing stuff. Right then, James Lord in the right lane and the left lane, Andy Nichols there. Andy looking to improve upon that first pass and getting away nicely, as you can see, flying up to the line. Looks like we've got some problems there for poor James Lord, but Andy crossing the line, 11.52, with James Lord breaking at half track. Well, back in the pits and there's work to be done on several of the cars. <laughs> that plug seems to be welded into Glenn Robson's Civic. So, what was the problem then for James Lord? Outer CV joint, uh, sheared the splines off. Yeah, we carry spares, and I've done it before, so I've had a bit of practice. Just trying to get it to run right, because I've had a bit of a misfire in fourth gear. But it's getting better, it's getting better. So, into the final qualifying session, and unusually, Richard Batty is no longer in number one position. Richard, you've got the European record, but with Calvin on the scene, you've got your work cut out, haven't you? It's going to be a close one. I'm, I'm number two qualifier at the minute. He's, uh, he's slightly ahead of me. Put a bit more in the car, see what it'll do this time. As today, we know you're capable of more than you've done out there, so it's a case of putting it all together today. Well, we've been testing some new settings. Um, we've basically binned them all off and gone back to the old settings now. Um, he's getting a bit too close, so uh, we'll start with the old settings. And So we've got the old settings in for this one. We'll see how we go. Well, Dan, you've had two passes, very consistent times. He's got two markers down there. What now? Uh, just keep trying, keep trying to get a bit more out of it. Uh, I need a master of the burn out a bit better and then the start. Get my 60 foots down and then hopefully it'll all come together. And how are you feeling out there? Are you feeling all confident? Yeah, just every now and then the gearbox doesn't feel too good, but it's something I've got to learn to cope with or get a new box. Well, Amy, you've had two passes so far today. What happened to the first one? Seemed like you ditched it halfway through. Um, it went into limp mode because the water temp sensor, uh, the, the wire had frayed off it. So it went into limp mode, and then we got that sorted ready for the, the second round. OK, and the second pass here, the second qualifying time, pretty impressive, 10.7. It's a nice marker for you. Yeah, um, I've done a 10.78 before, and that one was a 10.79, so it's very close to a personal best, but at least I've managed to back it up with another 10.7. And what can you get out of the car, what do you think? Um, I would like to think a 10.6, but I don't think it's got much more in it than that. So, final run then for Richard Batty, and he's going to want to take back that number one spot from Calvin. He's up against James Lord, but I tell you what, looking across at the far up road, there is no sign of Calvin waiting for a run, so maybe he's saving his motor, maybe he thinks he's done enough. That 9.124, Richard's got something to say about that. I'll tell you what, he's got off the line very nicely indeed. He flies up the track, getting towards the terminal. How's it going to go? 9.123, he's done it! 9.123, he has beaten Calvin's time by one one thousandth of a second. That was incredible stuff. For well, Dan Frost in the left-hand lane. Lining up next to Amy Bradley in the right-hand lane. Remember, this is the final round of qualifying, so reaction times do not matter. It's all about the ET. 
Amy looking for consistency, saying the best she's ever going to get from that car as it currently stands is a 10.6. Well, she's going nicely through the gear. She's getting nicely up to the terminal and crossing the line. 10.98, slower than the previous, but still in the under 11s, which is nice and frost, getting that flat 11. Well, Glenn, the car's on the trailer. That's not a good sign, is it? No, to be fair, right, since we've rebuilt this engine, we've never had a problem with it. Uh, but this is drag racing and things like this happen. So. We still get pushed back quite early on. I mean, you got up to the tree, pushed back. Yeah, the engine cut out on the line. Uh, there's obviously an internal fault with the engine. We're not 100% sure we've a good idea what it is, but it's same as, like I say, drag racing is drag racing. We'll, we'll get it in bits and see what we can do. Is it likely to be fixable for next time? Uh, I think we'll be struggling. Uh, too many parts to our different states. To be fair, I don't think we'll have it in time. Well, I'm here in front of Calvin Skerritt's car and an amazing 9.124 straight off of the trailer. Looked great for the uh, qualifiers there, but he decided to only do one pass. Now, Richard Batty came back with a 9.123, which puts him on the top of the eliminations there, and it may affect Calvin's time. But also, if you look at it, there's some people doing a lot of work behind me here. His team working feverishly on the car. There's a problem. We don't know what the problem is or how it's going to affect them and their, uh, their times for the next rounds for the eliminations, but uh, it's going to be tense. They've got half an hour to get the car ready. We'll see what happens. So here are the final qualifying times with Richard and Calvin way ahead of the rest of the field. But as we prepare for round one of eliminations, remember that the race takes place on track and not on paper, and just one missed gear change can lose that advantage. Well, with Glenn Robson broken, we hear that Andy Nichols is also having problems with a misfire. So two lucky drivers are set to have unexpected buy runs in round one, and here are the first round pairings. Well, here we go, race number one. Richard Batty in the right-hand lane against James Lord in the left-hand lane, and it should be a foregone conclusion, this one. It should really with Richard being able to get that car into the sub-nines. But I tell you what, he is having a few problems with gear changes, and this is not as easy as he'd like. He comes up to the line, it looks like it's gonna be a victory for him, but a 10.58, a worrying 10.58 for Richard against 11.64 for James Lord, but that is way slower than he should be running. The next pair then, Amy Brady. she should be against uh, Glenn Robson, but it's an unexpected buy for her, so all she really has to do is just break that beam, but she's a born racer, and looks like she's putting in a full pass anyway, albeit a gentle one. Crossing the line, nice and gently, 11.56 at 132 miles an hour. Well, it's Sam Bolton in the right-hand lane, up against Dan Frost in the left. Now Sam is the third qualifier. Dan is the sixth and uh, Sam shooting off the line there, getting a bit of a lead, but is Dan pulling him back? Hard to see at this stage. Oh, it's very, very close indeed, but oh, Sam takes it, crosses the line very nicely. Well, Calvin should be against Andy Nichols, but he's a no-show, so Calvin gets the bye. Is he going to take it easy or not? That's the question. He's only had one pass so far today in the qualifiers. It doesn't look like he's taking it easy at all. Absolutely not is the answer. He is absolutely storming this. He goes up to the terminal, crosses the line. 9.11 throws down the gauntlet there for Richard Batty. Wow. So as we move towards the semi-finals, it's going to be Richard Batty against Amy Bradley and Sam Bolton against Calvin Skerritt. And just time for a quick look around the Jap show while the cars are ready for the next round. Sam, if we can have a quick word, it's the semi-final time, a bit further than you actually thought you were going to make. Uh, yeah, we, a couple broke, so uh, and uh, we stayed as we were, which was good, and, and yeah, we made it through to the semis. But you've got potentially one of the hardest customers uh, to fight against, haven't you? Oh, definitely, yeah, this is a uh, foregone conclusion, to be honest, but we'll see what happens this racing after all. Yeah, but anything can happen, he could jump the light, anything really? Oh yeah, he could run a red, or obviously he could break something, being so quick and what it is, but we'll put in what we can and we'll go home happy with the semis. We've been pretty impressed with you this weekend, actually. The, the performance has been much better than you were alluding to at the start of the day. Yeah, I didn't have much hope for today, and uh, it, it surprised me. The first run really came out of nowhere, so uh, we took it easy for the rest of the day. Yep, 
Here we go then, semi-final time. Richard Batty taking on Amy Brady. Now Richard should have this one covered quite easily. But he's going to be looking to get lane choice for the final and he's very slow away. Sounds like another miss shift there. He's pulled out a lead though and he's going to take the win. But I tell you what, at 9.54, is that going to be enough for lane choice? That's what we're going to be asking him. Well, that's what he's going to be asking himself too. Calvin then. Oof, not a good burnout for Calvin there. In fact, there wasn't a burnout at all, was there? That's not going to warm the tyres at all. And so his crew chief tells him to do it all again. And... Oh, he does, and a bit better this time. So he's up against Sam Bolton in the Tigra. Oh, and I tell you what, Sam was away very quickly, but Calvin on him straight away, and... Uh, Oh, problems for Sam, half track. And I tell you what, there you go, Calvin, 9.25. He's beaten Richard's time, so Calvin is going to get lane choice in the final. Ah, oh, sad time there for Sam, though. So it's going to be a final of Richard Batty against Calvin Skerritt. Well, as the finalists prepare for their face-off, the action continues on track. We caught up with Amy Bradley to find out how her day had gone. Just did another, well, 10.9. Um, as long as I can stay in the tens, then I'll be pleased. Now, this form of sport is expensive, even this sort of level, isn't it? And you're talking about the upper limits being 10.6, but what can you do uh, financially, or what can you do with this car to get even faster? Um, the next thing that I was looking at is going on to the race fuel, but at the minute, like last year, I didn't have much luck with the car. Um, this year, I'm pretty much consistent, low 11s, high 10s, so I'm happy just to stay where I am, to be honest, I'm actually enjoying having some fun in it. I just want to say a massive thank you to Andy and Andy and all the lads that I work with at Litchfield Accident Repair Centre, which is now Fixed Auto Litchfield, and also CCC Racing's for Sonsme and the Dragwin. So it's final time then, and for the first time this year, Richard Batty is not having things his own way. And to make matters worse for him, his semi-final time was slower than Calvin's, so Calvin's going to get lane choice. And you can bet he's going to make Richard use a left-hand lane rather than his favoured right-hand lane. Good burnout there for Richard. And much, much better for Calvin this time rather than the first time out in the semi-final there. And you've got to wonder what thoughts are going through Richard's head here because he knows it's very, very close. You can't call this one. It could go either way. It really is that close. On the launch then, both neck and neck on the launch. Richard's starting to pull away there. A little bit of a lead, but Calvin is reining him in. And I'll tell you what, he's off the pace at last eighth, and Richard takes it with a 9.19 at 166 miles an hour up against the 9.57 at 160 miles an hour of Calvin Skerritt there. That was incredible. Neck and neck off the line. Calvin really did start to reel him back. That was amazing. Well, Calvin, that's the first time we've seen you this season, and that was mightily impressive. Yeah, it was. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes indeed now you pushed Richard to the very very end I know Richard was sweating it to the end did you really think you could take him in the final nah I just thought I'd give it a go and see how he, how he turns out well at the end of the day what a day that was Richard it was way too close to be comfortable yeah we, I thought he had me a, what 1000th on the qualifying and then uh, it, he was faster than me all the way through uh, eliminators but yeah it came down to the final heads up and we beat him. It almost came down to re reaction times, didn't it? It was very close. I mean, 60 foot, so I think we were fairly level. And then I just saw him disappearing slightly behind me, and uh, we were both spinning most of the track, so it's just whoever got the most grip on the day. Now, talking about um, Calvin coming back into this series, the first time he showed up this time, it's going to be a bit of a squeaky time for the rest of the, uh, the championship for you. Yeah, it's great, isn't it? I mean, two nine-second cars, well, running head-to-head. -head. He'll be running eights before long, and hopefully I'll be back in the eights next time out, so we'll see how we go. Fantastic stuff. Well, good luck for that. And uh, thank you very much for entertaining us. It's been fantastic and hope you've enjoyed the show as well. We'll see you next time at USC in August for some more action. We'll see you then.